<laughs> you asked, and we're gonna answer. Today, it's the Ask Me Anything episode with the boys. <laughs> we're back for an Ask Me Anything episode, but Papa Jay, the garden hermit, is on. And let's just kick it off. How, how long have we known each other? Our friendship seems to be really strong. I would say that it is. Yeah. And I, I would say we've known each other probably about a year and a half or so. Yeah, just about yeah. 18 months in that window. We both have different perspectives on how we met because <laughs> the story can be told multiple ways. From my perspective, a French senior <laughs> citizen with a tomato as an avatar DM'd me on Instagram. And from his perspective, you know, he was, I was just, just trying to be a friendly person. He's just trying you know, to connect. Reaching out. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I started Instagram as a gardening journal, started following the best accounts for gardening. Mm -hmm. Hit, hit his pretty quickly. Um, first. Yeah, first, let's be honest. <laughs> let's be honest. And uh, he posted a picture of his new homestead and I was like, oh man, I feel like I know where that is. Maybe it's somewhere in the area. And uh, connected, I was like, hey, like I see you're growing nearby and this is what's working well for me. Acting like I was giving him some tips. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Unsolicited tips. He was giving me, he, was, he was actually was giving me some tips. It was funny. He was you like, know, hey, like, casual. by the way, like that doesn't work that well. Like this works better. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we started, uh, you know, messaging a little bit, and he released Epic Six Cell Trace, which, as soon as he posted that, I was in his DMs. So he was like, hungry. <laughs> he was like, hungry. Let me let me get a sample of that, because that looks like probably the best thing that I've seen for starting seeds. Yeah. And I literally came over, and he gave me only one. I don't know why he only gave me one. Yeah. Yeah. He could have given me two, but anyway. Only had I, only I tested had it out. <laughs> tested yeah. it out. It worked great. And we were messaging back and forth. And as the homestead was like, expanding, and mm -hmm. the whole, you know, Epic Gardening was expanding, I started working part time and then we kind of just gelled and it's just turned into what it is now. Yeah. It's been really great. Yeah. Well, I mean, Jacques, I think it's worthwhile for you to do a full story sometime. Yeah. Because Jacques basically was a PhD geology student <laughs> who yeah. started working part time at my house, uh, just kind of gardening. And 100%. then, you know, as time went on, now we developed his, his, his platforms and his channels and you know now you're like a flagship creator on the epic gardening platform yeah. that's what you do full time yeah and i quit the phd because it just wasn't it was the best move i ever made yeah. let's just put it that it could do a longer story later but yeah it was a good move yeah okay so the next question it's not on the list but it's asked a lot and it's it's a question around when are we getting married <laughs> are we together <laughs> this or that and the answer is no, we're not. We're just friends. Yeah. And we both have partners that are women, surprisingly. You know, two guys it can just, actually be into gardening. Yeah. And, I don't know why that's so mysterious, but, yeah. you know, <laughs> guys do like gardening Problem as well. Solved. So. I think a lot, of, a lot of young men like gardening. It doesn't necessarily mean that they are partners in life. Um, but we are friends. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, that's what matters, guys. Okay, so question. This is a question more towards Kevin. Now that you collaborate more with Jacques and Chris, who is on our main channel, do you find that people call you Eric less frequently <laughs> or about the same as before? I actually do think it's less. Is it really? I actually do think it's, it's less. It's really funny. Because with Jacques and Chris, people think, oh, it's Kevin, Jacques, and Chris. And then they, they don't say it's Eric, Jacques, and Chris. And so I think they've realized now that we didn't name the company Eric Gardening. <laughs> It'd be and, a great name. It's and my name there. isn't Eric. So, so that's, that's helpful. <laughs> this is interesting. What, what were some challenges we have working together and how do we both approach mm. or solve our situation? What style of working in the garden have we come to realize works best the, for both of us? Yeah, and it's interesting because we both have very different sort of styles in general. Yeah. Like, I, as you see in my garden, I'm very freeform, loose, a little more organic about placement, mm -hmm. a little more crowded because I just kind of put stuff where I can. Um, I do a little less planning in the front, mm -hmm. whereas yourself? Yeah, well, I, I think for me, I love like clean lines and geometry and shapes and stuff like that. And then also I'm trying to think, okay, what's the best way to organize this so right. you know, we can keep bringing you guys content. And so that's been challenging for me is letting loose a little bit and loosening it up. And I think, you know, as you can see behind you, it, it, it's interesting how like a, a grid style of garden, once grown in, breaks its own lines. It yeah, does start true. to look natural. But, but yeah, mine looks more like a mini farm and yours more looks like a proper garden. And it's funny because I think we've both borrowed from each other yeah, the style. For like, sure. I've yeah. tried organizing my garden a little bit more. Yeah. I have a little bit more tight rows now. We have a little bit more wildness here with some more flowers and stuff planted around. So yep. I think it's been really interesting actually. It, it, it has been, yeah. Okay, is there any garden advice that you have previously given that you would take mm. back now? If so, what is it? I think for sure <laughs> in the earlier years of Epic Gardening, as I was learning, 
which, you know, that was part of it is I was, my, the whole thing with Epic is I'm learning while we're all learning. And so I'm evolving my knowledge at the, at the kind of the same rate. And so I, I remember like I had an interview with Jessica Walliser, uh, who's uh, an author, one of our friends here. And it was about insects in the garden. And this was like maybe five or six years ago. Okay. And it was the first time I realized how important the beneficials are to the ecosystem. I just like didn't know that before. Yeah. Uh, and that was years ago, but I don't think I really gave too much bad advice because of that. But I think I probably was a little more liberal on spraying, for example, mm. you know? Yeah. What about you? It's funny, thinking about this, I'm, I'm sure there's something that I would give back <laughs> if yeah. I try to think about yeah. it. Sometimes it's usually, not necessarily that the advice was bad, mm -hmm. but that maybe I didn't provide enough context as to why I'm doing something a particular way. I think that's what it is. And it's the context, it's the breadth of knowledge, yeah, right? So it's all, everything in gardening is it depends. Totally. And so if you don't know as many of the like variables around a decision, which you don't when you're younger in a garden, mm -hmm. then you can't, you can't offer that. And it's people. also interesting just as like we grow and we have more people are following us sometimes we might assume that they already know yeah. a lot about what we're doing. Yeah. And as new people are coming in, we just make that assumption and that's just probably not fair. Mm -hmm. So I think more context is key, but in general, I think we tend to give pretty straightforward, correct we, advice. I think what we try to do guys is we try to give not wrong advice, not necessarily <laughs> guaranteed right advice. Right. And so like that's a good way to put what, it. what we'll do is we'll, we won't say something if we don't know that it's true. And if we think it might be, we'll say, hey, this is anecdotally what I've seen happen in, in the garden. And we won't say like, oh, for sure this happens, <laughs> which I think you'll notice some other creators out there, they don't go that route. And to, to me, it's a bit of a disservice because you know, you really can't know everything. Yeah, and context is key. Yeah, totally. Okay, what are your favorite soil amendments to use in a raised bed? You wanna go first? Uh, yeah, actually, one of my favorite things, or two, I'll, I'll say two, kind of cheating. They're like micronutrients. Mm -hmm. So I like worm castings because it provides a little bit of organic beneficial like life to your soil. Yeah. But it also provides some trace elements. And actually that's the other one I put rock dust or azomite. Mm -hmm. Azomite. Just because I feel like if you're using a raised bed soil, it doesn't have all the minerals naturally present in the earth. So I like to include a little bit of that back so that the plants can get everything they could possibly want. Mm -hmm. It's a little bonus, but I just like adding it in. So I'm, I'm definitely with you on the worm castings. I think especially when you get a raised bed mix, it tends to be a little more woody than you might like. That's right. The, the worm castings help to sort of get that texture a little better. I actually think like just normal garden topsoil is a weird add-on that can be pretty helpful and eventually can add those trace minerals in. Yeah, that's true. And then something we always tend to add is either a garden tone or biotone from a SWOMA, some sort of granular fertilizer. I just did a reset out in the front. Yeah. You always do something like that, right? It's nice because it's a slow release. So you yeah. add in a good amount and it feeds your plants over many months. Totally. Okay, next one up. Um, what is the most difficult or painful garden setback you've experienced? Do you have like a really bad one? That I feel like I know yours. Um, what do you think it is? <laughs> skunk. Oh yeah. I <laughs> actually saw, I saw a skunk a couple days ago. Uh, honestly, skunks are kind of cute animals. They I are. actually think they are. I was walking around the bay a couple days ago and I saw like 40, <laughs> like literally 40 little baby <laughs> skunks. And they're little, they're like this big when they're yeah. babies, you know, and their tails are straight up. So I think they're pretty cute, but yeah, skunks are, are rough for me because they, they dig up your garlic uh, and your leeks and your onions. And if they dig up a root crop, it's really hard to reset a crop like yeah. that. Whereas like a tomato, it's not that hard to plant just it back. Just throw some soil back on it's it. Just more resilient. So yeah. I would say that, or um, maybe San Juan Cabestrano. <laughs> we got to throw up a prayer for <laughs> San Juan because we lost him for the third time, second time. Second, second. Yeah. It, well, we will for the third time, maybe. We, we, <laughs> we may not grow it again, honestly. <laughs> what about you? you uh, for big... me, it's, it's irrigation. Like yeah. that's my biggest thing is I'll, I'll plant all this stuff out. I'll water it very nicely, like in the spring. Like, man, it's looking great. Yeah. And then I'll just kind of forget. Yeah. that I don't have irrigation there. And then I'll come back and the plant's struggling. And I'm like, oh. now it's like almost too late to water it. Mm. So for me, it's the systems. So that's why I'm working on that this month. I'm gonna be adding in a bunch of irrigation because yeah. it just makes such a big difference. And it's probably the saddest setback. Look at you, look at the back yeah, of this. I mean, I mean, we put irrigation on the back, guys, and it's it's really done. And saves hours of time. Hours so, of time and hundreds of gallons of water. That's too. my thing is planting things where I don't have irrigation. Yeah. Not a good move. <laughs> <laughs> okay, how about this one? What are your favorite things about each other? Ooh. Ooh. Mysterious. Let me count the ways. <laughs> <laughs> I would say for for me, I think <laughs> as a team member. I think Jacques a capable guy. So, you know, early in, in the days of, of Epic, when you had just come on, we sent you on any task, really. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Jacques was down at our warehouse. 
We, were, we did warehouse days together. We would do stuff here. So, you know, computer work, Excel work, you, you can do a lot of different things, yeah. which I think is, it's a rare trait for team members to be able to do that much. I like doing a lot of different things for yeah. sure. Yeah. I'd say for you, it's really cool how forward you are with feedback. Like if you ask for feedback, you will actually get it. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get like some like massaged half truth of like what you're trying to say. Mm -hmm. I like the directness of being able to ask you for advice and actually getting it, mm. <laughs> which yeah. is really rare as well <laughs> to actually get genuine, honest feedback. So that's nice. a really great thing. Yeah. All right. There we go. How about this one? Have you ever considered selling Kevin and Jacques garden gnomes in the Epic <laughs> store? This person is asking for a friend. For They're a not friend. doing it for themselves. No, not... You know what? Ian behind the camera actually used to work at a company called Funko. They make like little dolls and stuff. Maybe we need to hit them up, Ian, and, and see if little we can make Funkos. some little, little Kevin and Jacques Funkos. That'd be amazing. <laughs> All right, so this is for me. Kevin, will you be adding more animals to your homestead? I don't think so for now. I've got six chickens. I have an unofficial garden cat, and then actually quite a few just critters that are around and i also have the epic koi and honestly there's not really a lot of space here for another creature I, maybe in some future more chickens yeah but or an epic turtle maybe, yeah a turtle maybe but I, i'd still be a little scared of this turtle like, yeah that's true not having a true home yeah so for now i think we're going to stay how we are okay here's a question i moved into a house for the first time with my very own yard i've been planning this for years and i can't wait to get on that clay soil what do you think i should do first to set my garden up for long-term mm. success I think cover crop, mulch, compost. Mm-hmm. Soil test. Yeah. First. But yeah. you probably if you know it's That's clay, true. there's two there's two schools of thought. It and this is what we would have done if we had gone back in time, is that cover crop episode, we did the Mowdown Showdown, we did the Tilling Typhoon episodes. We would have done that a year ago. Yeah. And then this would have been in a much better position. I just left that sort of barren and weedy for a long time. It's mostly because I didn't know what to grow there, but I should have grown the cover crops. So I would say for spots you're not immediately gardening, cover crop it basically immediately. For spots that you are gardening, you want to do like a compost till in if it's in the ground, yeah. or just build some raised beds and, and it, fill them up. And it is nice to have clay because your watering is going to be easier unless you're in a really rainy environment, then yeah. it's a little rough. <laughs> and yeah. they tend to hold nutrients better. Yeah, yeah. So it's just about getting it started. Okay, will you make an epic kitchen channel? I say probably not. We, ha we have a lot of channels already, guys. There's four in the Epic Gardening universe. We have Epic Gardening, Epic Homesteading, we have Jacques in the Garden, we actually have a shorts channel. That might be closing soon. There's just too many to manage. So I think the kitchen stuff, which you guys seem to like, is gonna just go into a playlist here on the, on the Homesteading channel. Yeah, it makes sense to just incorporate with gardening. It's very connected to homesteading, yeah, obviously. Totally. Yeah, totally. Um, will you all cover hydroponic methods soon? I really wanna see an aquaponic bed incorporated into the Epic Pond. Actually, the pond is an aquaponic bed. If you think about it, there's water, there's fish, there's nutrients, and there are plants. So the pond already is aquaponic and we are growing tons of stuff in it. We actually grew, excuse me, a bunch of watercress. But um, for hydroponics specifically, that's actually how I started Epic Gardening. It was all hydroponic tutorials. You can go way back on the channel and see some of that stuff. I'd say for now, it's not a huge focus because there's so much to do here in soil, but I totally appreciate that a lot of people love that method, and of course I do too, so it'll yeah. probably come back at some point. What are some top con container crops you would recommend? This is like one or two each. I'd say potatoes. I'm gonna steal that one before yeah. you do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I got nothing to say now. It just makes sense <laughs> in containers. They're easier to harvest, they're easier to like get everything out. You're not gonna have a perennial potato bed yeah. <laughs> that you're always dealing with. Blueberries are an obvious choice because yeah, you gotta true. you gotta customize the soil. Dragon fruit's a really obvious container choice. Um, I think you could do like those Tom Thumb style tomatoes. Yeah. Any any like patio style tomato. There's a lot of a lot of good container crops. Peppers honestly. are also great in containers. Yeah, peppers are great. Peppers are great. Uh, let's see. Will we ever attempt to create our own seed variety of something? If so, what? You think you're gonna hybridize from your own your own backyard? I've thought about it. Um, just sounds like very fun mm -hmm. to try to control and create like a tomato. Um, for instance, I think tomato would be probably the easiest mm. if you because there's things you can control about it. Beans maybe. I don't actually know how beans because I. They're like self-pollinating, You know right? what's the easiest is whatever Mendel did. Peas, probably, yeah. right? Yeah, I guess so. But I think tomatoes would be the most fun for me. Yeah, tomatoes would be fun. Um, yeah. It'd also be hard because you have to grow it out multiple generations <laughs> to be stable, but maybe. In our climate, you could do at least two generations yeah, per true. season, that's but true. yeah, it, it would be difficult. I would say what I'm interested in, guys, is maybe some crosses here just that happen, but I'm also really interested in trying to hunt down breeders that are making oh, crosses yeah. that we cool. have really yet to see. So there's some really cool stuff that's out there that doesn't really get talked about. I think we should try to hunt that stuff down and bring it to you guys. Um, okay, 
What are your thoughts on regenerative agriculture and do you think such practices can be implemented on a smaller scale garden? Sending love from Egypt. Well, that's really cool. It's... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> What do you think? I, I think, I think yes. It, I think yes, parts of it you definitely can. And I think part of it is also regenerative ag is kind of a loose, broad term mm -hmm. nowadays because it's being thrown around a lot. But it's all about in the same process of building your soil, trying to capture carbon. So even on the smaller scale using chickens, we could start doing some of that. Mm -hmm. But to get into like a smaller space, like it'll probably be hard on like a balcony garden, but I think you could yeah. definitely pull off some of those practices in your home garden. Yeah. Just by trying to reduce even just tillage alone. I think the way to think about it is like there's consumptive agriculture where your inputs are higher than your outputs. Right. Then there's regenerative agriculture where the argument is that the inputs actually are lower eventually than the outputs right. of the system, which it's I think- It's a long game. It's a long game, and you actually have to measure and know what those inputs are and where they're coming from, and you'd have to do a full carbon accounting, essentially, yeah, of, of where right. all this stuff. <laughs> it's like, in a, in a home, it's not really, to me, feasible, but I think what is feasible is just saying, instead of saying, oh, I need to go regenerative ag, just say, I'm gonna try to make better use of all my inputs and ideally lower them over time and just not stress about yeah. the counting. If, if we all did that, the world would be in a much better position. 100 we wouldn't agree. have to call it anything or have any battles between different <laughs> yeah. philosophies or anything like yeah. that. Okay. Um, how competitive does it get on who grows the best crop of something? I mean, it's not that competitive because it's so easy. Yeah. You know, for me, it's like, I don't even have to really try. That's it's, the same. It's, it's the same here, actually. Like he's, <laughs> It's, it's so funny. It's like I listen to an ant try to tell me about something. You know, it's just I, I can hear the squeaks, uh, but I, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. And I'm just over here growing monster potatoes. You know? No, I think we, year to year, we actually do edge each other out on certain crops. Yeah. Like I think this year I had you on brassicas, but last year you had me. Yeah. Right? And oh, you had no. those cabbages? Those cabbages? Pretty big. I'll admit, you had me on cabbages. And Brussels? Yeah, right. I think I had, I you, on had you on broccoli and cauliflower. He had me on broccoli and cauliflower. Yeah. But then I had him this year on garlic. You had yeah, me last true. year on that's garlic. That's true. That's true. I'll um, that. And then I had you on leeks, and but you had me, I think, on bulbing onions this year. I, you definitely onions. had me on bulbing onions. Oh, really? I'll say that. Much. Really? <laughs> yeah, I don't have much to show. Okay, never mind. So anyway, anyways, we but, won't talk about but that. But he once. has me on tomatoes currently, but my tomatoes are a little behind him, so I might have him. I might have him soon. You know, it's a question. I don't think so. You know. But anyway, hey, we'll let you guys be the judge. I think it's actually. It's a good question because it's fun. It's just like working out with like a friend. Yeah, yeah. It kind of pushes you to want to do better. So if you could find somebody to garden with, it's really just more interesting and fun. I think share so. tips and you could also do a little bit of competition. Which I think is just so. fun. Well, yeah, for example, I went over to his house recently and I saw his uh, grape trellis. Yeah. And I've been sitting on two flame seedless grapes for a while now. And I'm like, okay, now I have to plant these because they look so good, you know? So I think a little friendly competition totally. goes a long way. Okay, how about this? Besides gardening, what are three things we have in common? We both grew up in San Diego. That's one. So that's one. That's kind of like a... A eh, little bit of throwaway. Kind of a throwaway. Actually, you know what? There's not a lot of people who are native San Diegans. That's true. I'll say nowadays. That's true. Um, we also played a lot of video games growing up. We both played a lot of video games growing up. <laughs> And I played them into my adult age as well. I don't know about you. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> What's the third one? Let's uh, see. I guess we po both took divergent paths from our college experience. That's true. Yeah. Like, I mean, I came extent. out yeah. with an accounting um, economics degree, but I played online poker in college. So I was even in college, I was already on the way out <laughs> of the path. But after college, I decided not yeah. to go to like a big four accounting firm and sleep under my desk, which is all what my friends were doing. <laughs> and then you... I guess only recently diverged, but yeah. you still you still did. Yeah, totally. You know? I mean, from geology into gardening. I mean, you could tell I like the outdoors. I guess that's a theme, but mm -hmm. definitely not directly one to one with what we studied. What's interesting about you, though, is you became a creator, <laughs> and no one I think in your life would have pegged you to become one. I certainly wouldn't have you know? pegged myself as well. But a lot that's of creators sure. that get good at doing content creation and making like educational stuff like we do for you guys, and hopefully a little entertaining is why are you good at it? Because you, it's not that you're good at creating necessarily. Like you, right. that's a skill you can improve. You can go from zero to a hundred at that. Some people natively have a skill at it, yeah, absolutely. but you have like a research background, a scientific background. Yeah, actually. You know a lot and you're curious and you read about a lot of different things. And so it, it actually weirdly makes sense. It's not divergent if you think about it that yeah, way. Yeah, that's a good point. You know? Cause like uh, I did teach a little bit. I, I used to tutor. So yeah. some of that experience is definitely helping me help you guys teach how to grow food. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that's a great point. Yeah. So there you have it. 
our AMA. If you want more, we will do more, but please go subscribe to Jacques' channel because pretty soon, I'm gonna pressure you, you need to do a <laughs> I quit my PhD yeah. to become a gardener for a living, an internet gardener. There you Here's go. my story. I'll give you guys the full details. Yeah, and it's, and it's intense. So anyways, <laughs> stay tuned, subscribe, good luck in the garden, and keep on growing.